UFC Vegas 44 was one hell of an appetizer for us as we get into the last pay-per-view of the year in UFC 269, a card that's, I mean, Blake, when you and I were going over this, it, it's, especially for the bangers, which will come later, it's it's so hard to pick a fight that, like, um, I guess stands out because there's a lot of really good ones, whether it's from name value alone or just two guys that might be a little bit underrated but can still absolutely bring it. And there's not really, like, it might sound casual, but I'm sure you could agree. There's, like, on most cards, there's, like, a fighter or, or a few fights that, like, you don't really care about watching. You know, you don't really care if you miss or not. But I don't really have a single one of those through 269. So, man, how... Initial thoughts on UC Vegas 44 and how we feel being in fight week for UC 269. Initial thoughts on 44 was it was a sweet card. Uh, super entertaining. We had a bunch of finishes all over the prelims, all over the main card. Uh, so really no complaints from me. Uh, mm -hmm. Entertaining top to bottom easily. Yeah. And then fight week, you know, it's great, man. We ha I have uh, two of my personal favorite guys fighting on this card. I have uh, Cody Garbrandt and Sean mm -hmm. O'Malley. Two guys that you know I've I've been riding hard on the hype train for a while now, so Dude, it's going to be not cool even to see those guys. Wars, so you catch your roof for both of them. It's a win. I know. I it kind of it kind of I don't know about you though, but it kind of sucks having fighters that you really really love fighting because I get I don't know about you, but I get super nervous when I they hate fight. it. I hate yeah, it. Yeah, like palms even guys are sweaty. Like, it's gross. It's hard to pick. It's like man, who who am I going to cheat on? Right. Yeah, I feel like a bad fan. It's rough, but you know what? We got to do it. They're here to entertain, so we just got to enjoy the show. Absolutely, and uh, man, I am beyond excited. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to UFC Talk 68. Of course, I'm your host, Frost Salen, joined alongside by the fourth long MMA correspondent, Blake Campbell, and we got a lot to dive into because... We're going to take a look at the bangers. We're going to have to break down a lot of these fights on the main card, especially the really heavy implications from the main event. Jose Aldo is just a, a freaking legend, and I don't know another way to describe him. Of course, we're going to take a look at jo uh, Of course, Aljamain Sterling had to speak after that main event, so we're going to gotta take a look into his competition. Khabib is trying to break into the U.S. market with his eagle fc and uh there is um just some weird stuff going on between these two very high profile fighters and of course we're going to take a look at uc 269 and all of its glory and i really cannot wait for that day another but there's a reason that i actually can wait for that day it's because that is a, earlier at four o'clock eastern time i'll be doing the one chip challenge on live stream it's um I deserve this for losing a bet. I guess I shouldn't have made that, but I'm going to pay up. And I have to do that on stream so all you guys could watch me suffer in real time. It's going to be absolutely freaking awful. And I can't wait to have you all there to uh, to watch me just just wither in pain for, for hours. And attempt to go watch a pay-per-view. <laughs> Essentially is what I'm going to have to do about that. So, of course, that's going to be on Twitch. You can go uh, find our Twitch at thefourthlong.com along with every other link. And that's just twitch.tv forward slash fourthlongradio. Uh, and we're also I'm making it worthwhile, Blake. Of course, as you guys know, uh, over on our Twitter, on Instagram, our YouTube community page, I am running a poll. We have four charities that have been chosen by huge longtime supporters of the show and Patreon members. So the four we have to choose from is a senior dog sanctuary, stand to cancer, wounded warrior, and then of course the Oxford Memorial Fund. So like I said, Twitter, Instagram, and on YouTube community page, go ahead and vote for those. And for whatever charity wins, I will be donating a certain amount of money to them per each minute I go for, for the length of time I go without eating or drinking anything after eating the chip. So, uh, yeah, Blake, I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun just, just seeing me want to die, right? Yeah. No, I'm very looking, <laughs> very much looking forward to that. Uh, but at least a brighter side of news, if you want to, if you watch the NFL breakdown, I'll have to post this on the socials, but Blake... You haven't even seen these yet, so you're going to get initial review, too. Ladies and gentlemen, we have hats. Fourth and long trucker hats are finally in, in a very nice orange and gray with a 
It's, I was actually super impressed by the quality of these, if I'm if I'm being honest. You know, I really like them. And pre-orders start on December 11th during the live stream. And we'll have um, everything ready to go for that, for these actually really nice trucker hats. I'm super excited about them. Once again, from video, take a look at them right here. They are sexy. And I can't wait to get them out to everyone because the hats have been requested for a while. It's been a long time coming. It's finally all coming together. But Blake, it's enough time for me just talking. And it's time for us to delve into UFC Vegas 44 in the rest of this uh, lineup we got going on. And of course, the question we ask every week, Blake, did the bangers hit? I can confidently say yes with this last week that happened. Absolutely. Uh, don't think there was a banger that really uh, didn't impress. I mean, each one fin you know, was finished with a... A KO. Yeah. So, <laughs> and one hell of a KO. Right. You know, I think you're down the money. Once again, I really can't be surprised by that, Blake. You get it right. Congrats, man. You're, you're really good doing this stuff. But, of course, one of the, the first fight that was there, it was Brendan Allen versus Chris Curtis. And two fights, two knockouts as an underdog. It might be time to call Chris Curtis the... Uh, the uh, uh, prospect killer because he ruined Phil Haas and now he's ruined Brendan Allen and he's turning into an absolute stud and hell he's actually making a case for fighter of the year because I know he only has two wins inside the UFC but that's two wins both on short notice one first one was in his debut both his underdogs and besides this he had four other fights this year that he all won and five of the six wins had been from finish and so how high are you on Chris Curtis now after he's knocked out two big prospects? And are we going to see a number next to his name real soon? Hmm. Did Brendan Allen have a number next to his name? I, um, I believe so. He was, a, he was a top 15 fighter. Then, yeah, he probably, he probably deserves to have a number next to his name. I mean, taking mm -hmm. a guy out like Phil Hawes in a violent fashion like he did and then backing that up with another stellar performance against Brendan Allen, a, you know, a, a fast-rising prospect that's had some really impressive fights in this promotion mm -hmm. i think that there's no way you you can deny him uh getting a spot in that top 15 actually it was my mistake he did not have a number next to the name he was just right there next to the rankings but you still think that he might not get a number but uh hell he um probably deserves a fight with one of these rank guys huh or yeah, is that too is soon uh, I, I mean, I think he actually went for the uh, Maki Patolo call out. Or no, I'm sorry. Was it Tador? Tado the guy that beat him, Todorovic. Dusko. Does, oh, yep, yep. Yeah. yeah so yeah, I think he wants that... to fight him next because I, I'm pretty sure he's friends with Maki Patolo that got oh. knocked out. Well, so he wants to avenge that loss. But I like the little yeah. revenge. I think he definitely deserves, like I was saying earlier, I think he definitely deserves to crack into that top 15, maybe fight a fringe top 15 guy. Uh, but if not, I love that, I'm going to mess his name up, Todorovic. Am I saying that right? Yeah. As far as I'm Close enough. saying, you're right. Um, but and then what do you think about him being in the fighter of the year category with the last couple of performances? Uh, shoot. I mean, definitely... Very impressive to go 6-0 and in a calendar year. But I think you do have to keep in mind he wasn't fighting at the top level of competition mm -hmm. for the you know full six fights. Not taking anything away from him. Still think it's impressive if you're getting six fights on the street in a year and you, and you win all of those. I think that's <laughs> impressive as well. But I think there's been a lot of people out there that have done some really impressive things this year, mm -hmm. and it's going to be tough to compete with. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But, man, he's... If you want to make a, a statement in the name for yourself this quick into your UFC debut, he's doing it the right way. <laughs> yeah, he definitely is. I mean, now he has the big platform, right? So as mm -hmm. long as these results keep stacking, he's going to find himself in a really good position. Absolutely. And this guy is impressive as hell. And I'm super excited be, uh, to, to watch him rise just because he's also just a real likable guy every time you hear him on the mic. Just have, yeah, he seems like a cool dude. Right? And, and yeah. I have yet to see in MMA Twitter you is a horrible place. It's a place that says that John Anik is a meh commentator. First off, if you think that, shut up. No one wants to hear your wrong opinion. But it's also, you haven't really seen too many people hating if 
or anyone at all hating on, on uh, Chris Kerr so far. So that's obviously a huge sign. It shows that he has potential to be a fan favorite, almost like a Kevin Holland if you get on the winning streak like this and in fun ways as well. So I'm super excited to see where he goes from there. Uh, and then going into... Speaking of Kevin Holland, that would be a damn good fight too. <laughs> Speaking of Kevin Holland, that would be a damn good fight. Um, too bad he's going... Well, the, well, the funny thing is, Chris Kurt. I was going to say too bad he's going to welterweight. But the thing yeah. is, Chris Curtis is actually a welterweight that's just been fighting up in middleweight in the UFC. Yeah, you can tell, man. He's he's not got the size advantage, obviously. But Still not going to do it out. That, in power, class, that power translates, you know? It doesn't right. matter what weight class he's in. Dude, if he's not down dudes like this, what's he going to do is a welterweight? <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. that That's scary. And this guy has a good future right now. But going from the prospect killer to some prospects, let's talk about Jimmy Crute and Jamal Hill because uh, both these guys got wrecked in their last fight. Jimmy Crute with a knee. Uh, Jamal Hill got his arm absolutely mangled uh, by Paul Craig. But... Obviously, they look fine now, and Jamal Hill, at least Hill is, because he gets right back to his KO ways, K, um, knockout ways as he gets a 48-second knockout over Jimmy Crute. He now moves up to number 12 in the light heavyweight division, and this guy looks like a, a stud with a lot of the power. And a, I'm not saying maybe he doesn't have the prettiest technique, but sweet damn, does he get things done. And what are your thoughts on him and... Where do you think he goes next after this fight? I think he's a dangerous opponent for anybody in that weight class, especially just, I mean, look at his size, his speed, his length. He's He's got all the attributes to really give Awkward people problems fighter. on the feet, you know? Uh, the, only, the only question that we have with him, obviously, is just grappling, ground game, everything in, in that area, because mm -hmm. we saw what Paul Craig was able to do. But to be if fair, he has that Paul addressed... Craig. Yeah, it's a specialist, right, that, that was able to do that to him. He's really freaking good. <laughs> but, I mean, if anyone's trying to stand with that guy, I think that Jimmy Crute fight's going to serve as a really good notice for everybody. Like, you probably don't want to stand with this guy unless you have supreme confidence that you can, you know, one, withstand his hits, and mm -hmm. two, you can dish it out just as good as he can because that guy is a menace. 48 seconds with Jimmy Crute, who is a tough, tough guy. Yeah, that was that was really impressive. That might have been for me the most impressive performance of the night, minus Jose. It was one hell of eye open opener at the least. Because I mean, walk in there, like you said, forty second knockout against a, a stud like Jimmy Crew. That's not a lot of people can do that. <laughs> I mean, Anthony Smith couldn't even do it. I mean, there's a lot of high level guys that that it, it, it's just not possible. You have to have those uh, specific attributes in order to get a guy out that fast. And mm -hmm. Jamal Hill is shown against OSP, against Jimmy Crute, against a few other guys, like he has those attributes to be a finisher. He ruined OSP, man. That fight wasn't competitive either. So this dude could, in the light heavyweights of division where it's not like, it's not like it's weak, but it's, it's fairly top heavy. You know, you can get through the whole like six to 10 range or six to 12 range fairly easy com in relative to other um, division, so this guy could rock out the rankings as quick as he wants to, really. And then, let's talk about moving up the rankings, and maybe even not enough, but this co-main event between Brad Riddle and uh, Rafael Fiziev, and two friends fighting, and certainly didn't look like Fiziev was holding anything back as he, in, in my opinion, this was fight of the night, and at least performance of the night bones for this crazy wheel wheel kick knockout that just left Riddell looking like he was on another plane of existence. This thing, I, I was not expecting him to throw this out. And Hell, man, I, uh, first off, what do you think about the fight? And also, I guess there's a little bit of controversy just because, you know, um, it was Herb Dean refing, so of course there's always going to be controversy in that nowadays, no matter what what happens. But what do you think about the stopping from Herb? Because I thought this was actually a really good one. Yeah, no, I, I liked the stoppage. It looked like um, it looked like Riddell was kind of out on his feet after that, you know, uh, wheel kick KO. It looked like he kind of just kind of, he kind of had like that blank off. stare, you know, he in his eyes. 
<laughs> so, yeah, I had, I had no problem with that stoppage mm-hmm. whatsoever. I thought it was a fine stoppage, and that fight was amazing. Like, up until that wheel kick KO, well, I mean, which, which I'm not saying that wasn't amazing, but it was a really competitive fight. I mean, you could tell that these guys, you know, they were kind of, they were ready for each other. Uh, throwing, it, it seemed like any time one of them got hit, they would just throw five, six punches right back at the other guy, and it would just be an endless flurries. Um, but it was awesome. I mean, you saw the you could definitely see the Tiger Muay Thai in both of these guys with the leg kicks and the body kicks and all that, all that kind of stuff. So it was cool to see that aspect. But then, you know, when Fazeev did that wheel kick out of nowhere. I just, yeah, I, I was surprised because I thought it was going to go to a decision. I really did. Mm-hmm. I, I was like, man, these guys can't get each other out of there. They know, e- maybe they know each other too well. But well, it looked like a point. Neither one of them was going to get knocked out because they're yeah. taking out these shots and will care. And it's not like, it, and I don't think Riddell was holding back. I, I think both no. guys were really letting it all out. You could tell these guys were throwing with some freaking mustard in there. If you so. told me they were friends, I would not believe you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because they were, they were like throwing down, speed, man. man. They were throwing down like someone got someone's lunch money stolen, you right. know? That was such a, a damn good fight. But the the weird thing is, and there's p- and people pointing this out, that uh, Fazeev was ranked 14. He moves up three spots from a win like this. And the people ranked ahead of him are still guys like Gregor Gillespie, Conor McGregor, Dan Hooker, Tony Ferguson, and RDA. There's a lot of people clamoring that maybe Fazeev is being a little bit disrespected by not being moved up to the rankings as much and do you think how many guys in front of his do you think are actually better than him and is this 11 spot deserved or should be up higher well i mean rankings are earned not given i think that you do have to earn it and and i'm not saying that that's the case for every fighter some fighters do get dealt a better hand Mm -hmm. uh but where he's at right now i don't really have a, a super big issue with i do think personally that he could beat the likes of Gillespie, the likes of RDA, uh, possibly even McGregor. But, you know, those fights have to be made. We can't just mm-hmm. play Fantasy World and, and just start throwing numbers next to people's names just because we do MMA math in our head. <laughs> like, they have to earn those those spots. Absolutely. So, well, let's make those matches, Blake. Who do you think should be next for for Fazeev? It's kind of a little bit tougher choosings right now with the Lightweights because there's a lot of people that have fights. But two guys that... Don't I mean you obviously got to take Dan Hook out of the mix because he looks like right. he's just going down to featherweight, which of course is a fantastic move. I'm super excited to see what he can do there. He's probably not going to fight Conor McGregor. In fact, he's probably just going to want to fight sooner than McGregor comes back, even if that was somewhat a possibility. Gregor Gillespie doesn't have a fight. I don't think they Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson's probably more of a Conor or a Nate kind of guy, but. Gregor Gillespie and Rafael Dos Anjos could be two very, very good fights. Yeah, I'm I'm all the way on the RDA fight train because that fight just screams banger <laughs> to me. Uh, right. Nothing against Gregor, it's just I know the striking levels are not going to be the same, mm-hmm. um, and and I think it would just kind of be whoever could kind of you know implore their game plan on the other guy, like if. If Fazeev could strike with him the whole match, you know he's going to, and mm-hmm. that's probably going to be a bad night for Gregor. Probably not going to last all three rounds. If um, if Gregor is able to ragdoll him, then you know that he, that's probably what he's going to do for three rounds. Whereas RDA and Fazeev, I think both of them are going to have the respect for each other, but they're not going to fear each other, and they're going to be able to go at it equally. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I'd rather see RDA the RDA fight. Any one. <laughs> right? Yeah. Do in. I could already hear because both those guys, they hit like a freight train. And you're going to be able to see. If that fight gets made, that's something that should be headlining a fight night. Absolutely. I want to see five rounds or less, probably less, of that fight. Yeah, that would be sweet, man. Be an easy fight to make. And plus, like you said, both guys have nothing going on. And I, I think that would be uh, a big stepping stone for both of those <laughs> guys careers because they're both really really talented and i think everyone knows that and respects that so a win over either for either of those guys is going to be a big push to their career absolutely and i really think the only other guy that might have like make sense for rda to fight right now would be michael chandler but it doesn't it looks like chandler's not necessarily interested or trying for that definitely going for that connor fight and i really can't blame him for that but if I want to see RDA fight anyone, it's going to be Fazeev, 
or Michael Chandler, and both those fights are just, they're real, it just sounds fantastic, you know. So I'm really excited to see what we can get from Fazeev in the future because this dude was won six fights in a row. He's just been having the best fights in the card consistently, and this guy's a monster, and I, I really can't wait to see see what he can do going forward here. But that brings us to the main event of the evening, and I wasn't necessarily expecting a fight to go like this. I thought it was going to be a little bit more competitive, but Jose freaking Aldo, man. He's a guy that looks like he's just getting better and is still in the prime of his career because this guy goes out 50-45 in most scorecards and drop the Rob Font once or twice and just outright dominated him. So what do you think about this fight? And were you expecting something like this as well? Definitely was not expecting as dominant of a performance from Jose Aldo. I thought it would be a little bit closer on the scorecards. Um, and just as the fight, uh, the, for the fight in a whole. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I thought Aldo was going to win. So I wasn't completely surprised. Uh, I think I think everyone's still a little uh, surprised he's going down to bantamweight still and, and looks mm-hmm. as good as he does. It doesn't but, make sense. Yeah, but I mean, really, it, it seems like he's got it down. You know, he's 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 got the right team around him, and he keeps having fantastic performances. I mean, even the Yawn fight, he's just fighting a freaking stud. So what are you going to do? But yeah, I mean, this Rob Font fight showed the old Aldo is you know the new Aldo. There's really not a older and new Aldo. There's just a Jose Aldo that's always going to be a badass. So yeah, I I, I freaking loved it. Um, Font messed up Aldo's eye a little bit. Mm-hmm. Aldo was ripping him to the body, dropped him. What was it? A couple? Was it one or two times? I know for sure once. It was. In the first I, I think round. it was a couple times. But once in the first round, man, that one. Yeah, which was, dude, that was crazy. I was like, oh my god, is he gonna finish him right Almost here? Almost did. Then, yeah. So I'm surprised really, really, really Fon was fight. able to make it to the to the final horn. Yeah, he was taking some punishment. He was man, tough, but man. I, he really toughed that one out. Yeah, I, I think if Aldo wrestled a little bit less and and maybe. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to speculate and say that he was gassing, but he, mm-hmm. the amount of freaking hard punches he was throwing, I wouldn't be surprised if he was. So He threw a lot, so it, it would kind of make sense. And Man, this is just a, a crazy fight. And Take a look at now. Jose Aldo just continues to make his way up the rankings. He now moves into number three, passing Rob Font and Corey Sanhagen, and he's only behind TJ Dillashaw. Of course, Pierre Dion, the interim champion, and then Algerman Sterling, the ch- paper champion. He, yep, yep, he has the belt, is uh, how we could put that. So, what do you think is next for Jose, and what do you think is next for uh, Rob Font here? And is there a legitimate chance that we could see Jose Aldo win Bantamweight Gold? Hmm, he'd have to beat Jan again, but I mean. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, th- I think it really depends on who's holding the belt at the time that mm-hmm. Aldo would be uh, challenging for it. I think he, he has a chance to beat anyone in the division besides Jan because we saw, we saw what Jan did to him. And mm-hmm. I, I just don't see that fight going any differently any other time they fight. So as of right now, I'd probably say no, but he is the most unfair gatekeeper of all time, I'd say. <laughs> uh, the fight that I would really love to see that – probably isn't going to happen would be TJ versus uh, Jose. I just think that that would that fight just sells itself. I think it's going to happen. Uh, just because TJ's probably next in line for the title shot, I think Jan's probably going to fight Sterling, and then after the Sterling fight, I'm sure they're going to line up TJ. Mm. So I think most likely a fight with Corey Sandhagen is going to go down. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you never know, dude. Yeah. I mean, what if what if Dominic Cruz has a super impressive performance against Pedro Munoz, and then guess what? You could put Dom Cruz and Jose Aldo, two of the greatest of their uh, respective divisions, going at it. You know. Mm-hmm. I think in a perfect world, I would like to see Jose versus TJ, and then Rob versus Corey. I think I really no. like the sound of those matchups. It, it, it makes sense because you know, winner versus winner for the clear number one contender and then loser versus loser to get right back into to title contention. That makes yeah, sense. The only, but then the only problem the, with that is, is the injury. Yeah, yeah. That's the only thing. That, and that's why I'm saying it probably is not going to happen. I think TJ most likely just sits out, gets the title shot after the most likely Sterling and Yawn fight. 
Mm-hmm. And then that's just going to leave one of the guys out of Aldo, Sandhagen, and Font in the dust, you know, and they probably mm-hmm. have to fight a, a contender. Yeah, it would be a tough spot for Corey Sandhagen. Like, it would be a really good one because that could get him right back into contention again. But at the same time, that would be a fight against TJ, then a fight against uh, Jan, and then a fight against Jose. That's that is a tough stretch of fights. Now you see why Sean O'Malley only wants to fight unranked people for right now, you know? Once you get up mid- there, bro, there's no escape in these matchups. You nope. just get put against pit bulls every single fight. What, do you say he's a millionaire that is not even ranked? Yeah. Not bad. Not bad, man. Not bad. Like, he's doing good. And how, he, might, he might need to write a book for these folks, you know? Like, kind of help out these uh, other UFC athletes that really uh, aren't taking advantage of all these... Uh, different avenues well, that you heard, are out there for them to make money. Well, also, heard what Kevin Lee said too is that the real path to the top is to pick and choose your fights. Yeah, but Kevin Lee's just salty, dude. I don't, <laughs> I don't know because there's there's a little bit of truth to that, and then uh-huh. at the same time, it's like you really you only get the fights that the UFC offers. So Think he's just pissed. Only, if they only offer a couple names, you have a couple names to choose from. You can't just say, "Oh no, I, just, I want this guy." It's Fair just not enough. how it works. Yeah, so, I believe think, it. I think Kevin's a little salty. He's got to go, you know, got to go over Bellator for a little bit. Or Eagle FC. Oh, my God. What are they paying them over there? I want to know. Enough to take Rashad Evans out of retirement. <laughs> so, I guess it's how decent. I mean, he's, he's probably back by like some Saudi Arabia money or some rich Russian billionaire or something like that. But, of course... We're going to talk about Eagle FC in just a second, but that's our kind of recap and take a look at UC Vegas 44. Let us know your thoughts on this card, everything you thought about that. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Do you think that there's maybe been a different fight of the night winner? And where does Jose Aldo go next? And this living legend is just becoming even more of a legend as time goes on, and I just don't understand the career path that... Josie Aldo actually has right now. But uh, what we're going to do before, of course, we get to UFC 269 preview is it's time for What the Blank with Blake. Of course, we've been doing this weekly now for what, maybe maybe around a month, and you guys have been loving it, and I am super excited for the, for the feedback we've been given. And I love doing this stuff. I like throwing little, maybe little curveballs to Blake, trying to challenge him a little bit because he's been given some damn good answers over the weeks. But, of course, for those of you who don't know, what the blank, we have three statements. Fill in the blank with Blake as we have, uh, it could be filled in with, quite frankly, anything he wants to. So we get a little bit of creativity here and see how Blake's mind works. But, Blake, are you ready to fill in the blank? Yes. Absolutely. Well, let's get to it because the first statement of the show is that Aljamain Sterling can be blank. Top five fighters. You know at least one. Sorry, Corey. <laughs> huh. I would say... I would say... Got to take a look at rankings. Of course, eight and five to uh, one. And the champion right now is Rob Font, Corey Sanhagen, Jose Aldo, so, TJ, so the Yoda, fight, and Aljo. The, the question was worded, Aljamain Sterling can... Right? Let's highlight that word, underline it, italicize mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. put it in all caps. Mm-hmm. Can, can beat blank top five bantamweight fighters. I would say he can beat four. All by Piotr? Yeah, Piotr is not going to beat. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just need this fight to make. I could see, I could see him beating Aldo. I could see him, obviously... Beating Sandhagen's already happened, mm-hmm. and I could see him beating Dillashaw, but I cannot see him beating Piotr Jan. I just do you think don't people think that's a possibility? Kind of how good of a fighter Aljamain Sterling is, because really the only thing everyone when you think about Aljamain Sterling, you think of him getting demolished by Piotr Jan being gifted a championship. Not a lot of people actually talk about how he got to that title shot in the first had place. Had a hell of a run. Had a hell of a run to get to that title. He's a really good fighter. I feel like yeah. that's going overlooked. 
It really is, but you know that's kind of what happens when you have piss poor performances. It's a "What have you done for me lately?" Mm-hmm. type of world we live in. That's MMA, especially, dude. Yeah, especially MMA, especially in entertainment. So, you know, you're only as good as your last performance, and his last performance was, you know, it left a lot to be desired. So that's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> you're being kind with that one. And yeah. then, like I said, speaking about Eagle FC, Blake, statement number two. Eagle FC is blank. Of course, they're, they're coming up with an event in what, quarter one of 2022 in Florida, their first UFC event in got Rashad Evans out of retirement. And it's going to be headlined by Bigfoot Silva. So, Eagle FC is blank. A blast from the past. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I'm not really sure what to expect, but I'll stream it for free. You mean we're actually definitely gonna we legally pay for for streams? I'm gonna stream it for free. Could be come find me. I'll send a location. <laughs> send a location. Come on, dog. You just you know. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about <laughs> it. We'll talk about it on the show. Don't worry about it. We're giving you exposure. Hey, who do you think actually would has uh, like would actually go after you harder, Khabib or Dana White? Oh, Dana White, hundred percent. But he hasn't. I buy every right? UFC card, dog. Don't even. You know, I subscribe to ESPN Plus. I'll show you right now. <laughs> Don't get me started on Dana. Oh man, yeah. Um, I'm interested to see what the hell they're doing here. It can't be worse than Triad Combat, right? I thought that shit was sick. Well, you thought it was well, you thought it was sick for the wrong reasons, right? <laughs> I thought it was just cool because you know, a triangle. I like shapes. Dude, I feel like that's us as MMA fans. Every time, like, they throw out a different shape of a ring, we're like, ooh, different shape. <laughs> I feel stupid. I feel like a kid. But ooh, when they first came, octagon, and then circle, and then. But octagon is sick, dude. Like you can't beat the sick. octagon. Well, Unless sometimes maybe you, you did see like hexagon. Eh, that's I was gonna say bad. you could do a hexagon or a pentagon Ooh, or something triangle. like that. Triangle. Wow. <laughs> that's know? the thing, honestly. If like you, you could. Oh, it's probably gonna happen, Blake. Um, I'm a rip. A, I'm a be like M- uh, MMA promoter. I'm a rip a line of coke. The next thing that, uh, yeah, what what's a trailer is going to come out with his star shaped ring. I was going to say rhombus. I thought that was the next logical step. No, it's trailer, dude. Nothing they do is logical. We're going star. Go on. Five point star shape. You go from three to four sides, and then after that you go to five sides. Then you can go to six, and so on and so forth. So, like, the, is it like a thing where, like, the higher in competition you get, the more sides to the ring you get? I think that would be... The only logical explanation slash outcome, you know, <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> Look, I, was, I can see this happening. Unfortunately, I like the rhombus. Maybe a pentagon. You gotta throw a pentagon in there. Pentagons mm, are cool. I don't know. Uh, you might get canceled though. American themed card on Fourth of July on Independence Day is a pentagon shaped octa- or a pentagon Which shaped one, ring. Am I tripping? Which one's the devil symbol? Is that? That's a pe- that's a pe- that- pentagram. Okay, okay. No, we're good with the pentagon, then. We can do a pentagon. <laughs> dude, dude, I am a genius. Yes, Independence Day themed MMA event in a pentagon. <sighs> I mean, come on. Hire me, Triller. I am all here for... I can come out with the coke head ideas without even having to do the coke. I save you money, in fact. I save you money on the on the cookers and, and on the hookers and coke. So that's what I bring to the table, Blake. I, I I think we're doing pretty good with this, whether it be matchmaking or just coming up with shapes. Yeah, cost should, effective. We got brainstorming. Should we go to know? like kindergarten class? Just hold up a, a, a uh, like a paper of shapes and just have them just pick one. Hey, Bill, no. what's your favorite shape? I don't think so. That's not <laughs> how it goes. I think what you need to do is you need to get obscenely. Uh, inebriated, and then you just kind of like write ideas on like a a wall of some sort, mm-hmm. and then take spaghetti and then you throw it. 
and whichever <laughs> one it sticks to, like the most noodles, that's the one you go with. <laughs> now, are we, are we talking like just a marinara sauce, or are we doing meaty spaghetti sauce? And are we doing angel you hair, meaty. normal, you know, thicker? You got to do the meaty sauce. You got to do the thick noodles. Wheat, whole wheat, or white grain? Uh, we're going to do whole wheat. Oh, healthy. I like that. Well, it has to bounce out the cocaine, right? Yeah. Hey, don't do drugs, though, kids. <laughs> Stay away. Okay. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, we're going to leave that one on the video. That's for sure, you rat bastard. Um, last well, statement. Just, you know, we're what? sponsored by these guys. Are, are, if they pay me money, I, I will happily do it. I, you guys know me. I'm a shill. For money um, and anything to monetize the show. Speaking of which, uh, go subscribe to our Patreon starting at just a dollar a month. That's patreon.com forward slash fourth and long <laughs> to get started today. Sorry, guys, that, was, that one was my fault. <laughs> Damn it. No. Also, uh, buy our hats. Hats, yes, pre, <laughs> pre sales. <laughs> Give me money. <laughs> I'm wearing our MMA shirt right now. It's um, the certified banger collection. The back of the shirt looks way better. Go buy that. Uh, Basically, he's saying, Help me, I'm poor. I'm not I am to too, so help help both of us. <laughs> See? <laughs> sooner you guys help him out, the sooner I get paid. Exactly. Exactly. We're going on two years now, guys. I haven't gotten a dime. Someone report this man's to HR. I am Who's HR. Who's our HR? Is Jalen HR? No, Who's I am who's, HR. Who's HR? <laughs> I'm HR. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm HR now. I'm making my own position. No, 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 no. I'm not giving you USC HR. USC correspondent and HR, human resources specialist. No one gave you this. It's not on your job title. Mm. I own this shit, bro. I, I literally... <laughs> Is this mutiny? Look at the paperwork. I have the paperwork. Do you, though? It says Ross Allen. Well, let's move on. You know, I think you're just, you're getting emotional now. I don't want uh, to oust pull you. I swear to hell, if I see some two dudes in a suit next week and you come on trying to get your lawyers on the show, I'm going to be a little, little frustrated there, Blake. My have to I don't have lawyers. Pay. I don't need lawyers. I'm my own lawyer. Yeah, I'll take yeah. you to small claims court. Small claims <laughs> court. What state are we doing? I guess it has to be Idaho, right? Because business. California, is... Judge Duty. We're going on TV. No, business is registered in Idaho. I don't think we'd be able to pull yeah, that Plus, off. that's free advertisement, you know? We get a little more free advertisement going on. Hey, I'll put a sticker on Judge Duty's And I'm head. pretty sure you get paid for being on that show. Like, probably not Re something crazy, but. I'll take it. I'll yeah. take it. Hey, so, and then you know, we can so just. It's like, a move. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a move. We'll talk about this after. We're definitely not going to plan out anything, if that's what Judge Judy is wondering. Yeah. Yeah. But moving on to the last statement, which is, of course, everyone that's always in the news. We always see John Jones and Conor McGregor. They're teasing returns. There's nothing solid ever. So, Blake, between John Jones and Conor McGregor, Blake will have a, a fight announced first. And the keyword is announced. Hmm. Not necessarily have to fight first, but be announced first. I'm gonna say... This is a tough one, you know, because the injury with McGregor and then John Jones is just like... So uh, all over the place with, you know, personal life, everything. So... Mm -hmm. It's really, it's really oh, tough to course. say. I, I want to say McGregor just because mm -hmm. we have a little bit more of um, a definite time scale for his return. Like he's already said, I'm, I, I should be as long as everything goes uh, to plan. Uh, spar, I, I believe he said fight full contact sparring by April of mm -hmm. 2022, which would mean from then be probably another, yeah, probably another two three months. I would imagine for him to be in peak performance shape. Uh, so I, I would want to say McGregor, but it wouldn't surprise me if John got a fight announced early next year. So John I'm going to say McGregor, Steve. but wouldn't be surprised if it was John. You know, one guy hits DJs and old people in bars. The other guy just hits his wife all the time um, or only or pregnant ladies with cars. Um, I feel bad, man. Like that's not even funny anymore. It's just so low hanging fruit at this point. I am sorry. I will apologize for making those jokes just because they're, they're not even funny anymore, you know? 
I'm not. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I just hope for the best for all parties involved. It's yeah. It's a sad situation, you know, because the guy is so talented and uh, so polarizing. It's it's a shame. He'd you probably know, be a, a the guy that talented was... should 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 be recognized and respected, but mm-hmm. the actions that he takes outside of the ring and and even somewhat inside of the ring are very questionable to say the least and, and something that I don't think a lot of people can really support and get behind. You know, if it wasn't for the pictograms and if it wasn't for the rest, John Jones would probably be the GOAT and everyone would be okay with that. Yeah. So, that's what can take away. Um, don't do crime, kids. Um, don't do drugs, don't do crime. Don't it, do dick pills. <laughs> Never do the gas really have dick to. pills. Wait, yes. what? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Oh man. Not saying I've tried them. Just saying. I won't be surprised if you need them. Um, <laughs> moving on, hey, though. Of course, we that's... all natural over here, cuz. <laughs> that is a what the blank with Blake, and that really was a what the blank segment, Blake. Uh, cause... I got off the rails. <laughs> I think it was fine, though. I don't think it's anything that's that's going to get us. the the FCC. I don't think they're going to come after us. So I think we're fine. I think we're good, and we're just going to move on because the last thing we're going to talk about here, of course, is take a look at a hell of a load card that is UFC 269. Kind of like I was talking about earlier, there is hardly a dull fight on this card. You got anything from an intriguing matchup between Ryan Hall and Derek Minner on the early pre uh, on the early prelims to the prelims, where you finally get to see Josh Emmett back in action, taking on Dan Ige in what's bound to be a, a phenomenal fight. Then, of course, um, um, Holly on Pavia, Sean O'Malley, and that's obviously going to be huge. Right, Cody Garbrandt's making his debut at 125. Jeff Neal, Santiago Ponzinibbio. The, Hopefully, we can see Man Nunes murder yet another victim. And then I am so torn on this main event. So, Blake, it, it drop us your bangers, and then we're going to give you guys our predictions for the two title fights here. Bangers, we're going to go three in a row again. We're going to go the main event of the prelims, as we like to refer to it as. Danny Ige versus Josh Emmett, the boy. If you guys have not, make sure you check out the interview with Joey Rodriguez, Ooh, Team Alpha Male Boxing fuck? Coach, that Ross was able to do last week on Friday. What a plug, Blake. Look at you plugging. I'm proud of my boy. And it's yeah. great because he does talk about, not only does he talk about Josh Emmett's fight, but there's also two other Alpha Male fighters on here. If you guys did not know, Holly and Hollyon, Hollyon. Pai, Paiva yep. is a Team Alpha Male member, and obviously so is Cody Garbrandt, who is fighting Kai Kara France. So, uh... Joey also had some good things, some good insight to say about those two fights as well. You guys should definitely check that interview out. Real um, interesting stuff, especially, I think one of my favorite things we talked about is that Cody Garbrandt, yeah, he's debuting at 125, but according to Coach Joey, that's his natural weight class anyway, and he's just been fighting up his whole career and winning championships in the weight class that he should even be in. So mm-hmm. that's some real interesting stuff there, of course. A uh, huge opportunity for Pavia in this big old showcase. Anytime you get Sugar Sean O'Malley, all eyes are going to be on you. And then, dude, Josh Emmett, if you guys don't know, you, um, Josh Emmett and Coach Joe would go way back. Like, they both got into Team Alpha Male at the same time. They both joined together. They slowly worked their way up the roster. Coach Joey became the head boxing coach there. And the rest is history. And... There's a lot of stuff. Also, best part, there are so many damn names coming out of Team Alpha Male nowadays. And I I will say that they are the most underrated MMA gym in the world at this point. A lot of names, a lot of young guys. You have to go check that. Of course, that's at thefourthline.com forward slash MMA. But Blake, keep it going. Uh, also, I like the Team Alpha Male theme you, you have going on, too. You know, we're going all <laughs> Team Alpha Male, basically. So, uh, sorry, not sorry. We, I mean, we really are. It's three three fights in a row, three team alpha males. In they're a just row. Good Not, fights. Yeah, they're just great fights. I mean, I'm you know me. I'm Sugar Sean fanboy, so we're gonna go Sean O'Malley <laughs> versus Hollyon Paiva. Are you gonna have That's to the, grab the jersey that he rocked up to Vegas in? No, I mean all those are. I uh, I bought a few of his first merch drops, but now he's dude, he's popular as shit. Those things sell out like instantly if, it, if it's a jersey and it's a limited drop mm-hmm. then i i probably am not by my phone and hey, at least you gonna... got them i the well, only I thing i've got good care of them i've only gotten the uh 
I besides that hoodie, drops. right? The hoodie, the Celtics looking hoodie, and then I got the uh, tie dye, like clover leaf looking uh, well, t shirt. So. stuff, so you're you're living. And I'm not really the biggest fan of the jerseys, too. I don't know. Hmm. I mean, I think they're okay. I just, I don't know. Fair enough. Not my best. Not my yeah. f- most favorite. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> uh, it's going to be a great fight. We watched the last fight with Kyler Phillips versus Halion Paiva. And it, I mean, that was an insane fight. Uh, I'm surprised Paiva did not get finished in that fight. And I'm actually surprised he got the W mm-hmm. in that fight. But it showed how. Uh, how 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 granted of a chin I guess this guy has. How much heart he has. <laughs> he has no quit. And pairing that with a guy that is a phenomenal striker like Sean, uh, I think only is uh, can be referred to as a matchmake in heaven. You know, so that's going to be great. I expect fireworks off of that fight. I expect that to possibly be the fight of the night. Um, and then my last banger, as we alluded to before, Cody Garbrandt versus Kai Kara France. Uh, this is really important, I think, for the flyweight division. It's mm-hmm. been injecting some new blood in there. If Cody can get the job done, he's probably going to be fast-tracked to a title shot. I would not be surprised if he actually got the next title shot after Figueredo, if he had an perf- uh, impressive performance. Um, and then same thing with Kai Kara France. If he has an impressive performance, he's probably on the short list for getting the title fight as well. So uh, not only th- is this going to be you know, just a barn burner, but... It's got some title implications on it as well, so it's going to be really interesting to see what the outcome of that fight is. Those are all three really good fights. Of course, you can list like eight fights in a row on this card. That's just going to be really good. Like basically, once Dom Cruz, for me, mm-hmm. it's it's uh, it's once Dom Cruz hits. I, no, actually, I take that back. Tuivasa and Sakai, man. <laughs> I would I would really say Tuivasa and Sakai. And every fight from there on is going to be phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Hell, even, even the even the Pena and Amanda Nunes fight, I think, will be phenomenal because most likely Amanda Nunes is going to murder somebody. I like seeing murder on TV. You know how I feel about Valentina and Amanda. Oh, kill them, just sacrifice them. I mean, just keep feeding them. Was it? Um, yeah, no, I have no problem with that. It, it's super fun. Grab your rubies, all right, because it makes the belt look better. But, Blake, that takes us to our predictions for the co-main and main event. Of course, the women's bantamweight title is going to be on the line for just, like, the, the Matt Nunes is going for, like, what feels like her, like, what, fourth, fifth title defense in a row, something crazy, just because she doesn't lose anymore. Juliana Pena talking a whole lot of smack in the lead-up to this, especially even before the fight was initially scrapped because of COVID a while back. I think that was supposed to be on the August card with... Um, Cyril Gaon and um, and Derek. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, with uh, man, how uh, Derek Henry? Yeah, I don't know how I blanked on that one. Whatever. Uh, moving on. This is going to be really good. F- f- well, I wouldn't say it's a really good fight. It's going to be a. It should be a really entertaining fight. So, your prediction for this one, Blake? Uh, a man knew this in what round? <laughs> <laughs> Because hmm. it's not going to be Pena. I'm going to say round three. Ooh. I'll give her three rounds. I think I'll go two. I think Pena might be able to survive the first. But Are you going TKO or straight up KO? TKO. Yeah, same here. I think... Uh, has a man that, like, knew, has ever, like, actually... At least recently, just totally knocked someone out. Most of her wins are like being a lioness and just mauling her opponent to death. I'd say the closest one would probably be like maybe Holly Holm head kick, or yeah. but even that one she followed up on. And the same thing with like the Chris Cyborg where she made her sniff her own ass. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, she dropped that that second that fi- final drop was just Dude. oh damn night. night. Night, night, dude. Good night, man. Yeah, no, please don't. I, I never want to get hit like that because I die. Man, yeah. a man would kill me. Um, but the tougher one, and the really tough one right now, is the main event, Dustin Poirier, who's all but, I mean, he has everything but the championship to say that he is the best lightweight fighter in the world right now. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people think he has been ever since Khabib retired. And he's, he's proven that, but... 
And Charles Oliver, a veteran to the game, finally got his hands on the belt when he knocked out Michael Chandler, a thing that Justin Gaethje could not do. And he has he's just a really, really, really well-rounded MMA fighter. And it's a good thing that Dustin is underestimating him because you shouldn't. I don't think I don't really think people are because Charles Oliver is a really damn good fighter. Dustin Poirier is just a really damn good fighter. How do you see this one going? Man, I was really confident up until like I woke up this morning. <laughs> I was watching UFC Countdown last night. You know, went to bed, and mm-hmm. then I actually ended up having like a crazy vivid dream. Like I was cage side at UFC 269, and I was watching the main event go down. And it just looked so freaking real to me. But Oliveira actually ended up getting the W in my dream. So I was really confident with my prediction. I was going to go with the diamond. Uh, and I still am. But mm-hmm. it, it just was funny to me waking up this morning and being and kind of like replaying that in my head and being like, damn, that really just happened? That's crazy. But, uh, yeah, you know, I liked it, though. It was like I got a, a free pay-per-view in my brain Yo, as I, I was sleeping. Vivid so dreams like dope. that could be the coolest thing. Yeah, it was sick. It was really, like, in-depth and in-detail, so I, I enjoyed how, it. How did he win? He actually TKO Dustin. Oh! On the yeah. feet? Uh, no, it was on the ground. He was ground and pounding him. Well, so, damn! And I believe it was, like, third round. So I was like, damn, that's kind Ooh. of uh, unexpected. Blake. But hey, that's make believe fairy tale land. So let's go back to real world. Is uh, it? I think. I really hope it ends up being. A, I almost want this to be a third round TKO for Charles Oliveira now. <laughs> I know, dude. That'd be sick. That would be, be insane. Like, I'd be like, damn, dude. I have superpowers. Straight <laughs> up, six cents, dude. Uh, hey, but we'll ha- we'll have this to revisit if it does happen. You know, it's let's on camera. It- um. My my actual prediction, though, I, mm-hmm. I do think Dustin Poirier is going to get the job done. I just think he has the more impressive resume. Not saying that that matters in a fight, but mm-hmm. I just love his experience that he's gotten. He's faced the best guys, you know, Habib. He's beaten up Holloway twice. He's Which beaten he up almost McGregor submitted. twice. Right. Well, I guess. Yeah. Well, I guess he Well, he put him in a compromising yeah. position. I, I, I wouldn't say almost submitted, but he wouldn't. Any other fighter would have tapped. Probably, yeah. Habib just is used to bear grip, so built different. Built different. Um, but yeah, I just think Dustin's going to be the more durable guy. I think he uh, he has more grit, um, toughness, and just I don't know, man. I, I just I feel like he's going to be able to find a way to get him out of there. I mean, just look at the the Michael. I know this is kind of bad, but look at the Michael Chandler fight. I mean, dude had him hurt. Mm-hmm. Ten aided his ass first round. Mm-hmm. If that happens to, to uh, with Poirier, he's not going to let you out, man. He's a lot, you know, more experienced in the octagon. He's been able to deal with everything that's, you know, come his way in his UFC career. He's gotten up from downs. He's reached the highs again. So I don't know, man. I just I just feel like Dustin Poirier is going to go in there and finally get what's, you know, rightfully his. I I really do think he deserves that belt. Dustin's fight like he was insane. It, it really is ridiculous. This guy can... I feel like he's super prepared for any situation that Charles Oliveira can throw at him. Yeah. And he's Charles fought Oliveira, the best guys and didn't put in every situation that you could think of. And it's good that Charles Oliveira is probably going to put in every situation imaginable too because yeah. he's, he's inevitable. And if, I mean, the only thing with Poirier that I would be very obviously aware of is just the ground game. I mm-hmm. would not want to engage with Charles. Like, that is mm-hmm. a shark. Right, you don't engage. You don't wanna... but I feel like if he had to defend, I feel like Dustin definitely has a, the ability to defend. For sure, I just think that if there's a way Dustin can stay away from that completely, mm-hmm. not saying that that's a high possibility, but I just I'm just saying I, if if I can, I don't want to engage on the ground with that guy because he is a shark on the ground. We just pull everything fight a shark out, in, You don't fight a shark underwater, bro. I, I know, you know Tony Ferguson, I guess you can call him a little bit of washer on the downside of his career, but like on the ground, Tony Ferguson, who's people were saying that he would be able to out-ground game Khabib, and Charles Oliveira put him through the ringer. If it wasn't for mm-hmm. Tony Ferguson being an absolute psycho, he would have tapped him twice. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think Oliveira is going to be able to do the whole ragdoll deal that he did with Tony Ferguson. Poirier is a big guy, dude. He's a big guy. Li- it, it, like, Poirier, he, his waist, like his torso, 
He's a wide dude. Yeah. <laughs> he's a big boy, man. Yeah, I think he cuts down from like right around 186 or 190 or something. I, I'm pretty Damn. sure I saw Colby, Colby Covington posting about it the other day. He's like, yeah, he actually would get on the sta- uh, scales and be like a couple pounds heavier than me. <laughs> so. Hey, and uh, it, it's tough. I, I see Dustin by decision in this one. Uh, I think that's what I'm going with. But at the same time, it's not like just because I'm saying Dustin's going to win this fight, Oliver is going to have his moments in this one. It's going to be, it, we know it's going to be a fact. It's Dustin Poirier is going to have to weather the storm, I think, once or twice in this one. I just think he has the ability to do it. It's going to be a very close fight. I think it's going to be a fantastic fight. I just think that Dustin Poirier is just, just a little bit better than Charles Oliver at this point. You know? And, man, I, I don't really want either guy to lose because I really enjoy either. Um, but it, it's it's certainly going to be something. But you're going with Dustin, and and I'm going with Dustin with decision. Nothing would love to wait uh, to hear what you guys think because even the odds makers have the super close right now. I believe Dustin is a minus one seventy um, favorite, and the Charles Oliveira is a plus one forty dog. So it's pretty even betting odds, and I I like those odds. I think they're super fair, super reasonable. And I absolutely agree with Vegas there, but, uh, dude, this is going to be a hell of a night. And I just hope I'm not in too much pain where I can actually enjoy these fights. <laughs> so, just remember, it's for charity, bud. Suck it up. Dude, I'm, it's for charity. I got I got put in the work for charity. I'm going to make it happen because these places need, need, need some money, man. I... I I'm going to put the team on my back for you guys. Put the team on my back. I'm going to donate to charity. Of course, more details will trick out uh, through the end of the week. Keep voting and keep checking that stuff out. But before we cap things off here, ladies and gentlemen, what other than the Nene of the week? And this goes to a couple specific fighters on UC Vegas 44. More specifically, their haircuts. Because the Nene of the week goes to mullets. Because both of the guys that had mullets on this card got knocked out in Jimmy Crute and Brendan Allen. And so, apparently, they're not the hairstyle to go with. Which is, actually, I'm disappointed because I do love a good mullet. But I guess you can't do those anymore in, in MMA. Not if you want to win, I guess. Shoot, dude. Unless you want to end up on the wrong side of the highlight reel, I guess you go with the buzz cut. Um, or just something a little bit shorter. Business in the front part of the back. Save that for the post-fight party, I guess, man. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in this week at UFC Talk 68. We're just one episode away from the nicest MMA episode of all time. And I think it's great because it'll coincide with UFC Talk 69. It will coincide with UFC Talk or UFC 269. And what better way to have the nicest episode pretty much to cap off the year and to cap off pay-per-views. Yeah, because I think there's not another uh, event after next UFC week, right? Vegas 45. And that, uh, we're yeah, that's, that's Doc is in, um, in, in Derek Lewis. That's crazy. I feel like they almost always had a card on New Year's Eve. Really? But I remember they're, because I remember... Maybe they're um, giving guys time off now, which is which is nice. Which Yeah, which is nice. Uh, Cody Garbrandt, when he beat Dom Cruz. Um, and I think that was Amanda Nunes when she beat Ronda Rousey that night, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Guess I was we don't do that Eve. anymore. You can't I remember any... because I was at Snow Globe that year, dude, and I was so <laughs> pissed off I couldn't watch it. Oh, that was gonna be like the first fight where I was like completely, like fully on the Cody Garbrandt train, like mm-hmm. hype train. And man, that that probably right there would have been since I'm a Raider fan and I'm a Sacramento Kings fan. That probably would have been my Super Bowl moment, mm-hmm. like watching that live and being able to take everything in and see that masterclass performance. But you know. I was. It was the definition. One of the best title performances you can see. It was. Dude dropped him. What he dropped Dom Cruz like what three times? Yeah, I think it was at least two or three times. It cut him open with like kind of a a really lucky uh, leg kick, right? Or like head kick with yeah. his leg that I don't even know if he was trying to do that, but yes, the kick yeah, with his leg. Fight. Thank you, Blake. Your fantastic MMA analysis here. Hey, you idiot! I was saying leg kick, which would mean a kick to his leg. You dummy. Hey, but you said you said leg kick with his leg or a head kick. I with said his leg. a head kick. Yeah, with his leg. Are you stupid or what? Probably. Yeah, you like the Broncos, so I know you are. 
Go Broncos, man. Both our teams suck anyway, so it doesn't matter. Nope, your team sucks. My I team can't, is okay. But your team sucks harder. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, no. Joey Rodriguez interview. Go check that one out right now. Huge stuff coming for 269. You will have Joey is in Vegas for three straight weeks for Vegas 44, UFC 269, and then Vegas 45. So absolutely crazy stuff going on there. You're going to want to listen on what Team Alpha Male has going down right now. And your ride paper has built one hell of a gym so far. And, like I said, live stream of pain for charity goes down December 11th at 4 o'clock Eastern Time on our Twitch. You're going to want to make it for that because it's going to be a world of suck. Or trucker hats go on pre-order or pre-sale on December 11th as well. So keep an eye out for all that stuff. Best way to keep in touch is to hit us up on Twitter at 4th Long Radio, Instagram at 4th Long Radio, or best of all, find all your links over at the 4th and Long.com. And a huge shout out to our Patreon supporters because we can't do, um, they really help keep the show going, keep everything going live. Um, huge shout out to Ray Rodriguez for all your car collecting needs. Go ahead and check out at the Big Bat Box on Instagram. And also, if you like cards, if you want to get into card collecting, or if you're already into it and need some more advice, Card Stonks drops every other Friday. Of course, we just dropped our first episode last week. Took a look at a couple NFL guys and a couple MLB guys. Then we'll have one again next week. And huge shouts to Brad Watson and Neil Wiley. But Blake, your thoughts on UC Vegas 44 in one word or phrase? Fire? No. Yeah. All right, yeah, I, uh, I'm okay with that. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a fire from card, and you can't really say otherwise. But go on out. I can't wait to see all of you on Saturday. It's going to be a something. It, it, it's definitely going to be something. You know it's a bad sign when you, you post about doing the one-chip challenge and the Dude Wipes account likes your tweet. It's going to be tough. Hey, but Dude Wipes, hit us up. I, 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 I'll take it. I'll take some free wipes, you know, I'll take a little sponsorship from there, and enjoy the hell of UC 269, we can't wait to see all of you guys next week, have a good weekend, y'all.